Welcome to Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble, and on today's tips and tricks, we're going to talk a little bit about welding stainless. For welding stainless steel, it has a welding characteristic somewhat of like a carbon steel, uh, except for it has a slightly different thermal characteristic to it. It tends to stay localized, and there's a few things that we can do to try to take the heat out. We can run heat sinks, um, we can keep a nice tight arc length. Um, and try to run just the minimum amount of amperage to it to get the, the seam done. Um, what I'm doing on this project, it's actually a motorcycle exhaust, and it's unknown what the material composition is. Uh, I went and did a research, I couldn't find any information. I know it's a stainless, but I don't know what grade. So I chose not to use an ER308L rod and I've kind of went to my go-to when it's a dissimilar metal or I don't know what exactly I'm welding. Uh, I use a rod that's called a Super Missile Weld or a 3 uh, SMW rod. And what I use that for is joining maybe a stainless to a carbon uh, piece. Sometimes you run into that. And what it is, is it's a real high tensile strength rod, about 107,000 PSI tensile. And then it's got great ductility, so it keeps things from breaking apart. Um, the brackets that I am welding on are 120 thousandths thick, and I'm going to weld it to a 35 thousandths exhaust flange. Um, for my shielding gas, I am going to turn that up to about 15 CFH. I'm going to do about a half second of preflow, because argon shielding on stainless is very important. Uh, it's very important to backside purge it. So if you were actually going to join two tubes together, um, what I would do is I would tape one in and then I would run another separate regulator of argon into that. And I'd back purge it for about maybe two minutes or so uh, at maybe one or two CFH, just enough so it stays in there. And that'll keep a nice crisp inside weld and uh, get away from what we call sugaring. Um, another thing that we can do on, on this to take some heat out of it is maybe run on pulse. But being that I don't have any test pieces on this exhaust, it's just kind of like a one-shot deal. So I don't want to take the chance of maybe going too hot on the pulse settings or not get it dialed in right. So I'm going to go ahead and use the foot pedal. I'm going to start off low. I'm going to drop down. Normally I would run a 332nd tungsten on this. and I'm going to drop down to 16th just so we can keep a nice tight arc length and really control our puddle and do the best we can do. So let's see how she welds. I have a half second dialed in of the pre-flow. It just allows just enough time to get the argon down. I am using a gas lens so it's less turbulent and it really keeps the argon there. You notice I'm running a pretty decent sized cup there. And looking for the most amount of coverage possible. Keeping a very tight arc length here is very important trying to dip and continue to move. As we come to the end of the weld, we'll talk a little bit about post flow. Post flow, I got turned up to about eight seconds and I let the full length run while things cooling. It's just gonna give you the best result there. For coloring, we're looking more of a lighter salmon color. If you're starting to get into purple or into a dark gray, you're too hot. Hope what you got out of this was not just my word for things, but the number one thing I want to pass along is always do the research. You have a computer for a resource, Google search it, and it doesn't mean just because you read it on the internet that it's actually the truth. So maybe do a search maybe on five different ones and figure out what's the right process for you, the right rod for the job, and then go with that. Thank you for watching Longevity's Welding Channel. I'm Tim Roble, and I'll catch you here next time.